So on a cold, crisp January morning, I turned on the machines in the studio and ended up writing this track, Somebody's Watching Me, which later came out on Voigtman's label, Subsequent. This is a super analog jam, one of the wonkiest tracks I've made. Um, I really like it. I wish the mix was slightly better on it. But in this video, I'll be showing you how I made it and giving you some insights into the track. I think this is a really cool one. It got pretty well received and yeah, in general, I think it's very nice. If you'd like to see more things like this, head over to the Syntho app. This is where the best stuff is. We've got over 380 videos now, I believe. We've got a news feed so you can connect with like-minded individuals. We've got a monthly challenge. We do live classrooms. We've got direct messaging. We've got a news feed and a whole lot more. So if you like the sound of that, try out the trial for £10 via the link in the bio. But if you don't head over there, just please like, comment, subscribe to this video and keep supporting the channel as we continue to put out content. This is... The only track I've ever done where 90% of it is done outside of the box. So I'll be looking at a lot of audio. But what will be cool is I'll explain my thought process and explain why the hardware allowed me to do certain things that I wouldn't have been able to do inside the box. And I'll also try and give you some insights how you could do it inside the box as you really do not need hardware. If I'm honest, round about the time I made this tune was when I just got my S2400, which is just below there. I was really feeling the jams and I was making some really cool stuff. I've definitely gone back to a bit of a in-the-box workflow, partly because I've had so many things on. I've got a bit rusty on the old machines and you do kind of forget how to do certain things, slows you down and all that jazz. So when I'm making music at the moment, I'm trying to just jump straight in and doing a lot in the box. But we will take a look inside this one and hopefully you will enjoy it. And if there's any questions, always just get in touch. I've just seen a little clip of me when I was recording out in the studio and we'll play about two minutes of it now so you can get a feel for the finished product. I did the mix myself on this. It's always interesting to go back onto my old tracks that I mix myself because I can <laughs> straight away hear like, ah, oh, that could have been better, that could have been better. And I'll tell you what I think could have been better in the track as well. And it's, it's frustrating sometimes because you know if the track had been mixed better, I think it would have been even more bomb. I think in general... It's a bit bright and they didn't do enough panning and um, just in general making it nice and wide. So anyway, let's play it Oops, from the start.
think we should let it play all the way through. Vocal just comes in out, which is super nice. There's a lot of synths going on, which makes it really, really cool. There's quite a lot of information in the synth range, which is could have mixed better, but the groove sounds good. So we'll start from the kick as always. This kick was recorded from the S2400. I've shown you this before. I've literally just got an EQ on it taking off some of the lower frequencies and then this one is doing nothing so that's all i've done i've literally recorded the kick in and put an eq on it so what's really cool in the kick here is you've got these this this pattern at the end which really makes the track groove so if we look at this and you can hear a bit of swing on that as well i think i probably went for about mpc 1660 so if you wanted to do that inside the box i would go groove here and then i would go to scroll down and go to mpc 61 maybe one of them we're not going to put it on here but you can hear that and the velocities are just slightly lower can you see how it's slightly quieter this kick drum um, probably quite hard to see but ah they're not even that yeah they are see that's quieter than that just because the ones in the offbeat can sound better if there is a bit less volume gives it more groove so again gives it a bit of variety what's really cool here as well you can see the kick drum can you see it slightly out of time and this is the beauty of hardware that you get this overall delay of drums and synths that are all slightly out of time which gives it a more analog feel you can do that inside the box using track delay to use track delay, if you look at the bottom right hand of your screen in Ableton, it's a D. When that D opens, this number thing opens. So we could like shift things up, shift things down by a millisecond, and it'll basically just, if I put this on with the bass, or watch this. See, it starts to go out of time. But there's no right or wrong amount of delay. If you want like a super tight tech house groove that's a bit more commercial, you want your drums super tight. If you want to be pushing a more analog weird sound, track delay is a great thing. Those who have been watching my videos for a long time, I've probably heard me bang on about this, but people still don't do it. Um, and then they wonder why their tunes sound quite generic and vanilla. It's because, well, it's not because, the only reason, but these things add up. And if you're not using track delay, you may find that your grooves are a bit tight. So the bass next, I can't really show you the sound design of this because it was done on the MS-101, which is the Behringer emulation of the SH-101 by Roland. This is a classic, classic synth. You can pick them up about 300 quid. Honestly, every single person listening to this video would probably benefit from getting one. It's great for learning a bit of basic sound design. It sounds fucking good. And that's it. And it's not that expensive compared to a lot of other synths. <laughs> And 
this is the melody. Very, very simple. But this just allows all the other synths to do a bit of work. If I went with Trillion, you could take a quick look and see if there's any presets similar to it. Um, let's have a look. It was quite filtered out. Let's go to model SH101 inside Trillion. Um, we could go with like fat bass. Let's try one of these. That this one might be quite good filtered out. So, so if you could bring the envelope down. So, so, so turn the release up a bit. Any of these, yeah, I think the square base quite filtered out would work. So bring the envelope down. Up. Obviously, it's got a slight different bite. You could play around with different presets, but essentially, find a cool sound, bring the envelope down, bring the filter down, turn the release up a bit, and you'll get something nice. There is something about the hardware bass that always sounds quite unique. I don't necessarily think this is the best bass in the world, but it's cool. So, that's what you could try. Um, if you're using other VSTs for bass, not Trillion, I'm sure you could find something similar, like a square, and then just filter it out and find something cool. So that's our kick in our bass. The bass has been mixed with no sidechain, as always. Very, very slack mixing by myself, but it sounds okay. Really, I should have EQ'd it. I should have sidechained it, probably saturated it. But I did make this tune about 18 months ago. So, oh no, no, about a year ago, I've I've really, really uh, become more aware of the things I should be doing. Even though I know what you should be doing anyway, there's always that thing between like over mixing, under mixing, and I went through a phase of deliberately under mixing things, and now I'm just about getting the right amount of mixing. Um, but to be honest, I, I like to get someone else to mix them now, because I can get them really close to how I want them to sound, but I somehow just ruin it at the last bit sometimes. So... Next, let's look at the drums. These are all hardware, all of them, which is kind of cool. Um, so we've got this snare, which is what's so good. So the snare is off the RM1X, the Yamaha. I know many people have bought this instrument because of the snare, because I've been talking about it a lot. So listen to that snare. It's just insane. So I've got a different tom on each groove. So. so it's a low tom, then a high tom. So you could easily do that inside the box, choosing a 909 tom, uh, like a low. Then I've got a slight bit of reverb is off this new verb hybrid and for the mixing i just got a bit of an eq on it again nothing crazy my logic was it sounds that good outside the box i'm just gonna leave it because it sounded fucking cool and again if we zoom in we can see it's slightly off the grid so we're gonna get some more um so we can see that there they're pretty tight together like see this is coming just before that which is interesting as it's going to create a bit of a gap in the groove. So that sounds really, really nice. This is the snare. The pattern is pretty simple. What I have done is snare fills at the end. So I've actually physically cut the audio up myself, which again creates a different kind of, you know, if the snare's slightly off the grid, you get some... Uh, imperfection there which could be done easily inside the box you could just flatten your snare to audio 
or you could just do it as MIDI. You don't need to do it as audio. There's not really any benefit to, to flatting it. You could literally just create a MIDI track and draw that pattern in and use track delay. So that that's that channel. Then we've got this closed hat, which is really cool. It's got this metallic sound. And I think this is from the RM1X again. But we can see, zoom in, loads. You can see again, look at all that. Massive gap, massive gap. And this just got an EQ on it. Just taking off some of the high end, left in the low end. I think my logic here was to try and create a bit of dirt in the mix with that. Then we can look at the 16th as well. Let's do this one next, the tambourine. So the tambourine. This was from the S2400. So this is just literally. Dit, 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 dit. No EQ on it. I've just got it panned to the right. And then we can look at this 16th hat. Oh no, that's not do that's the zap. The zap's quite a prominent part of the track. So the zap was from the Ah, this is a MIDI, so I added this in afterwards. This is on the left. So now I've got the tambourine on the right and that on the left. So, so that's quite a nice call and response between the two. And then what I want to show you is this drum reverb. So for this track, I did it all outside the box and I was using my Yamaha SPX 90 reverb which is an old 90s reverb thing. I got it for 100 quid off Facebook Marketplace. But I've not been using it as much recently because I couldn't figure out how to um, use it as a sender return inside the box. I was using it through my mixer. So it sounds like this. I think I'll just send it from the snare, but it was just adding a nice bit of... Tiny bit, super subtle. If I go here, let me show you this part. It's probably more. It's creating a bit of like, you know, something out there. I'll take it out. And this extra space again comes back to the thing I was saying at the start. This order accumulates to give it a bit more of a unique vibe. So if we look at the kick and the bass and the drums all together, I've always got this 9 and 9 that comes in. A 16. So all together they're grooving like this. It's a very simple drum groove. The, the track doesn't stay interesting because of the drums in this. The drums are just a, a continuous thing and then it's the synths that really bring it to life. So the kick, bass and drums. It's a very simple pattern. Pretty classic house pattern to be honest. 16 to just go into so look so if we look at the hats just on their own look how delayed that is as well and then on the drums but the actual group I've just got a compressor on there this is just gluing it all together a bit I always just do this random preset called Drum Bus Punch. So the vertigo is by UAD. I couldn't really delve too deep into that. We have got a module on compression inside Synth, though, which I'd recommend checking out as it can be explained much better than I could by Brandon. So we're now going to look at some of the synths. I'm going to show you from the start what I did. So I made this really cool track. You'll have seen me jamming at the start. And then once you arrange things live, you're like, okay, now we need to put some final touches on this. And for this, this track, I was convinced, okay, I'm going to do some overdubbing, which is when you let an audio take record for X amount of time and you just jam out any synths. So what I did was with this Yamaha, it might have been the, the Roland, I think it was the Yamaha, there's some really cool synth sounds. And I just recorded these this this live. With my fingers on here. 
Puts a mic shift on it. No EQ. Just completely raw. Because I would have this intro recorded, then I just went... And I really I said. So you could do this with a... This is, the, this is hard to do inside the box because I feel like your brain process is preset flicking. When it's in front of you, you can't really jam and preset flick. Whereas this, like, I'm literally just looking at the machine, just pressing random keys, flicking through it. That sounds cool, that sounds cool. And then it record for a while, then you go back and edit it afterwards. And I think that is probably the main advantage of using hardware. And that pad is incredible. You can even hear there's like a little weird noise. So that got jammed there. And that was it. And then I think this other... Was this another effect? Ah, we recorded a thing in... Uh, I'm going to put this underneath the drums and work down. So what comes in next? So we can put the drum reverb on. 303 was the melody for the acid. So this is a very prominent part of the track. I'm gonna just show you the acid first, the melody. So it goes, here's the melody. And this was done on the Behringer TD3. They're about 90 pounds. I've used mine so much in my tracks like Slipper All Summer. Um, I use them a lot around that period of time. I've not used it as much recently, but it's killer. And on the acid, I've got this. So first is the Culture Vulture by UAD. I always like to use this on acid. It really just fucks it up. You can really go. To be honest, now my taste is changing a bit hot, like a bit more raw. I probably would have cranked this all the way like this. Probably would have gone a bit harder on that. But this is by UAD. One of the most famous distortions. You can do some really cool shit with it. It's pretty hard. Hardcore. And there's amazing presets. This can be done on... You can use this on drums, synths, anything really. Then we've got a bit of EQ. EQ. Then we've got Echo Boy, which is giving it a nice... A bit of width, I think. Yeah. And then we've got micro shift for some chorus. So what I've done there is with the melody, uh, it's playing all the way through. I've just recorded a live takes so it opens up and closes with the cut off mostly in the resonance. So you can hear in the intro, it's quite um, low. I've just opened it up as I've gone with the auto filter on there. So if I can show you, I could use a ABL3 just to show you. So if you look at 303, emulation, um, I've basically just gone. Midi pattern. I've just gone. So there is a different tone to the ABL3 and the Acid. They're both uniquely great, but I do prefer... Actually, to be honest, I don't prefer either. They've got different chant... There's a different situation for both of them. Um, but yeah, I've just opened the cut off, which you can do in the box. You could either map... Um, you could have like a... You can map a button to it if you've got any kind of controller or a keyboard. Or you can just do it yourself inside the box manually. Um, but this is really good to do automation and things like that. And keep a simple element very interesting if it's opening and closing throughout the track. Even if it's just subtle automation, automation is a game changer. So, if we listen to that, it opens up. And I also use that reverb, the SPX90, on the acid. So listen to this. I really like the idea of just the imperfection on that as well. 
so. And that is the core of the track, really. At the start, we also have this, um, I saw that intro thing there, is it there? I saw an OB thing, it was a pad here. Hopefully I've not just deleted it. Mm, there should be a chord here. Yeah, I can hear it. Profit, dark notes, okay. Ah, so this is another thing I recorded. So this is just two chords. Have I got the MIDI? I believe, oh, is it this one? So this was just four, I think this was four chords. I must have the MIDI somewhere. Let me show you, is it this one? No, it wasn't a chord, it was just a single note. So I think I followed the bass with this. I think I followed the bass with this. So if we look at this. These singular notes can be really good for creating a spooky vibe. So you can have your bass line and then try and follow it in some way with longer notes that aren't rhythmic. And then that just comes back in. No automation. This was just turning on and off when I was recording it live. And it just adds that creepiness, that weirdness. So. so this was done on the Prophet 5. I just preset flip through that and find wicked sounds. So when that comes out, there could have been a bad transition there, but we live and learn. A, a, a swoosh or some kind of delay. It's a bit abrupt that the... the bass coming in so that i should have had delay i should have had some kind of like transition effect but once that comes out the tension kind of the tension builds then drops and the bass comes in so now we can look at this section here comes in there. So let's look at this section now. So two sounds come, well, three things come back in here. The profit comes back in. And here's what's cool, because I was probably jamming this out live, I'll have turned a few things off, turned them on, and got a really nice little section which would have been hard to visualize so you can see the profit comes in there the dark notes so if we play it from there again so the first note of one is this acid sound here So this is just a audio sample. So that's that, very simple. And this is just comes in in sections like there and then at the end, this is just to keep it interesting really. And then we've got these chords that come in which are from the mini log. So let me show you these. So the mini log was the first that was synth I bought. And these stab delays were from the Strymon Volante Magnetic Echo Machine, which is just here in front of me. I've not used this ever since. It doesn't seem to work properly, but this is basically a tape echo. One thing I'm thinking about is potentially like getting rid of loads of my hardware and making a makeshift setup somewhere with just a few bits of hardware, like just my delay, just my S2400, just the RM1X, and maybe like just the profit and just trying to make tunes with a much more limited setup at the moment. I'm barely using the hardware because there's too, <laughs> there's too much of it. So the problem is when you buy loads of stuff, you kind of have all the gear and no idea, which I'm definitely guilty of. Because um, like you've got when you get into the swing of using it all, it feels natural. But then when you take a break from using it all, you're very very rusty. And right now I'm very rusty, so I'm just choosing not to use any of it. But if I only had like the RM1X to use or something else, 
it's just a clear and next actionable step you know just get good at the rmx again and then maybe start using the s2400 again whereas at the moment it's like okay all of it's just too much let's just use inside the box so yeah we've got this cool style which is this chord here with a bit of tape delay on it and you'll hear the tape delay move slightly and look here like we did this automation with the delay so turn the feedback up on the delay for transitions and that makes a really nice transition this bit because this delay is it So if you want to do that inside the box, you could have this stab like this. I'm going to show you. So the Echo Boy by Sound Toys is great. Let's use the Echo by Ableton so anyone can do it without even if with no Sound Toys. Um, here we go. So basically, it's this. I think we have it on time. So you you had had it on time. So then you put in the feedback up, watch this. So you can unlink them. So you can do the craziest shit with Echo. There is a tutorial on just Echo inside Synth though. But I've done that by hand, which is really, really cool. I think it adds a nice touch. Then this Yamaha comes in. So this little melody fills in that gap here. I mean, that transition's really cool. So this melody here is from the Waldorf. Some kind of funky pluck sound. I'll see if I could find something inside Omnisphere. Or even just like a... Yeah, like that's pretty cool. It's just something like that. Um... I would just go through any kind of pluck. That one's pretty cool. Basic Vintage Plot, which is with Ableton. Um, but that's from the Waldorf Micro Q. I will do a list of all the gear at the end of the video inside the description. So that what comes in here, and it comes back in again. I really like this sound. It just comes in on the brakes. So it gives it a kind of contrast to the overall groove. This effect here as well is from the RM1X. I just recorded this in live. I literally just pressed it on here and just found a nice effect and cut the rest. So like I would record it, do loads of different effects on here, different sounds, then just get rid of the ones I don't want and keep the ones I do want. So super easy. That is nice. Then this um, snare comes in as well. So I added this extra layer. So this is like an extra fill into the bars. It's another snare. So 
that comes in there, this section. So I did the extra snare halfway through the track, give it some variety. <laughs> It just means it's not the exact same snare fill all the way through. I think what's worth noting here is because I created so many synth channels, it allowed me to get really um, experimental with the arrangement. If you've only got like one stab, one kick, one bass, maybe, you know, a one lead sound. You can't really do this kind of thing, but because of, I was, I think I'd create something cool, then I was going around in circles with different ideas and just kept creating more synths. Then in the end, I just recorded a live take of it all and it all worked together because originally, like, this sounds like one idea, the Yamaha. That sounds like one idea. Then the Waldorf sounds like another idea, wherever that may be. Is it this one? Can't see it now. This one. So this is like another lead. And then the acid is like another idea. And I actually, if I remember correctly, I think I was using the, making a trap around the wall door. Didn't quite work. Kept the sound there. Moved on to the acid, but kept the wall off there. And then as you can see, they were working in the same key. So it meant when I cut the acid out... <laughs> That still works, so it's the same key. It's not being used. And this is just a note that sits on top of the track. That's actually doing quite a lot. It's almost like, sounds a bit out of time as well. Just two notes. But... So this vocal, let's take a look at this. Just, just, I'm in my, my, my... This was just taken from a random sample. It goes. Just just I don't know what it's even saying. I put this Alter Boy on, which is for Older is Better preset. This kind of gives it some, well, it says monophonic voice manipulation. <clears throat> so you can change the pitch like this. Just just I'm in my, my, Let's make it a high pitched. Put it in mono, EQ'd it, and then put it wide. Just, just, I'm singing in my and then if we look at the sender returns, I've got a reverb on A, which is my drum reverb. Always quite a short one. On B, I've got a delay by Korg SDD. This is really, really cool. And then C, I've got a reverb again and then d there's nothing being used on there so i think that covers all of the elements okay guys thank you very much for watching that hopefully it was useful i enjoyed watching that one back and listening back to the track and yeah please leave your thoughts below and have a great day night wherever you are in the world